At least Ben's trying. Oh my god! Benji! Oh my god! Finally! It's working. It's working. The rock has, has come, come back, back to Skyplant! It looks has like come we are... all over your face. Nice. <laughs> What's up, people? Welcome to the GSC Podcast. I'm your host, Lauchi, joined once again by Johnny. Hello again. Jimmy C. Hello. And Jenny Spagnoli. Yes. Yes. I apologize for the extended leave of absence there. We, you know, hit it pretty hard last year. Decided to take a bit of a break. Uh, and now we're back, refreshed and ready to go for the rest of this year. We took Christmas yeah. and we ate loads and we forgot to come back. But now we're back. That was a thing that happened. But there's been like three months, guys. Three months of gaming awesomeness that we haven't been over. So, I expect interesting things. And what have you been doing this last three months? Was it it gaming awesomeness? (laughs) It was for me. We'll we'll see, won't we? I think we will. (laughs) Johnny, Johnny, what have you been up to this last three months, bro? Just hitting the old PS4 machine, mate. Hitting the old PS4 machine. What games have you played on the PS4? Uh, all the free ones, obviously. <laughs> uh, mostly, mostly Battlefield Four, to be honest. Um, and then Ground Zeroes. MGS Ground Zeroes. Talk to me about Ground Zeroes, Johnny. It is short. If you want it to be short, if you just want to, get, you know, do the one mission and, and be done with it, you can. You're done within an hour, pretty much. But I've spent about six hours. I'm going after all the achievements, the trophies, and uh, yeah, it's good. It's, it's still short. I think it might be slightly too expensive. I think Konami did overprice it a little bit. How have the but how have the gameplay advancements worked out, man? Fantastic. It's the best Metal Gear Solid, as in gameplay wise. It's um if you ever played Peace Walker, uh, it's like a more enhanced version of Peace Walker, and uh, I love Peace Walker. It's my second favorite game. Yeah, Peace Walker played awesomely, man. Yeah, and um yeah, plays very well. It looks very nice. Um, on the PS4, 60 frames per second make a big, you know, a big deal. And yeah, it's good. The story is interesting. You don't really get to see much, though. This is what uh, I've heard. The rest of yeah. you guys played this as well, didn't you? I did. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, t- touching on the price point, Johnny's right. It is a bit overpriced. Um, but I mean, I, I bought it for the PS3, so I got it as a download for 20. But I also got Peace Walker in there with that cost. So That's I a- think. Mine's yeah, kind of leveled a out a little bit. Yeah, that's a better deal. Jenny, did you play 25. it? <laughs> no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to know things haven't changed in this regard. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, what did you think? It was... It was a game. <laughs> no, I thought... You could definitely tell... It really annoyed me that... I, I didn't. Uh, the graphics didn't wow me. Um, and if you're going to have a ridiculously short game, you're going to have to have some bring something else to it. Um, I found it dull. Um, yeah, I, I didn't like it, but I, uh, my my opinion doesn't. Uh, it matters. What's your, what's your stance on the series, though, Johnny? Like, obviously, we know Johnny's a massive fan of the series, so that's going to be something. That kind of has a little bias thrown in there, but where do you stand with the with the all of them? Um, I I think it's progressively gone downhill. If I'm brutally honest, um, I'm not saying not in a consistent slope, but when you when you think back to say, well, well, going back to the first one, which I only played what almost a year ago, um, or played through it again about a year ago, that was really enjoyable. And I remember when I first played through two, really had a lot of fun. And there was, there was even though it was mainly cutscenes, there was a lot keeping me coming back. Um, the pace, the pace of both of them was really good. But 
I don't know, like four I really struggled to get into. I didn't play three, but four I didn't really get into. Mm. And then this well, listen, this isn't really five, it's more of a DLC which has come out beforehand, but Demo. Did you play Peace what? Walker, yeah. Danny? Peace Walker, no. I have I think I've got it on the Vita, actually. Um I have to go. double check. Because really Ground Zeroes picks up right after Peace Walker. So, like, Paz and Chico won't mean nothing to you if you didn't play that game. And yeah, but, what happens afterwards as well. But but that aside, I just thought... I thought the graphics were not poor, but you, they just felt like an upscaled PS3. Game. That's what it is, though. It is, it is upscaled PS3. I mean, um, but but that's, 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 it, it looks nice, runs really well. Um, I think the graphics are nice. I don't, I don't think they're bad at all. But yeah, yeah, the next-gen game is... Pretty, it, I thought that was a pretty... <clears throat> big kick in the teeth really like if it was as I, as I was saying if it was a if it was developed on the ps4 and it was still short then you could say wow at least the graphics are amazing but yeah i i don't know i thought uh, mm. i don't right. know what they've really done with it i guess i haven't played this game so i i can be the voice of reason that makes sense to me um my problem with it is this i play metal gear solid games for the story and the boss fights that's, that's what I want out of an MGS game. Give me a massive story, tons of cutscenes that tell me that story, and give me some epic boss fights. There's apparently, like I said, I haven't played it, but by all accounts, there's none of that in Ground Zeroes. So I have no interest in it at all. There's quite a few cutscenes, and yeah, there are no boss fights, but um, I think it's still worth playing, Ben. I think you should give it a go. The gameplay's really fun, and what they have enhanced from, the last, from MGS4 makes a big difference. Well, yeah. I'm I'm holding out for ground, ground not ground zeros, Phantom Pain because uh, I get the feeling that ground zeros is going to go cheap when Phantom Pain oh, comes out. Without or be doubt, free, yeah. maybe on PlayStation Plus in. around that point. So I think I'll just wait. Yeah, fair play. Or just borrow mine. <laughs> or I could just borrow yours. But I mean, when I hear online that people have speed run the game in five or ten minutes, like doesn't exactly fill me with. Uh, right. Yeah, but with that point, though, and I made this point on our blog post, and that's when people are speedrunning this game, it's after completing it, they know the route. It is only like a 30-minute to an hour mission anyway, but that's cutting all the skip... Uh, cutting, s- skipping all the cutscenes. I'll get my words out. <laughs> and, <laughs> <skip> um, <laughs> yeah, cutting all the skip lines. And not even... Yeah, I don't even. But, like, that's it. They know the route. They know when enemies are going to be facing which direction and so on. So they've just gone out, they could have done it blindfolded the way they've learned it. So yeah. of course they're going to get it done in 5-10 minutes. And on that, I suppose, that, that got me thinking about Monkey Island. I mean, I, I finished that in about 2 hours, uh, but that game's a hell of a lot longer. Once, oh no, I think it was 2 hours. Yeah, well whatever. Once you've done it, then you know the route. So um, you know how to, to complete it. So I suppose speedruns are aren't the best way of judging a game's name but the difference but is again. the difference is monkey island you can pick up for about five pound and mm. ground zero is on playstation 4 is 30 pound well, even though you I'm can not... get it for about 24 i know but still about 20 quid on most websites now yeah. and 25 on the psn no, no don't get me wrong i'm not try- i'm not making a compare i mean they're two completely different games but the point is um i think I the think... biggest frustration is it's still a short game even when you take out the the speed runs, you know, I mean, five, ten minutes that's, or ten minutes, that's incredible time. But even an I mean, hour or two hours for a 20 You're forgetting is... the, uh, the uh, replay value, though. I mean, there is a lot of, like, you know, there's five other side missions as well. And there's actually quite a lot of content in there. Like, yeah, you can complete them really quickly, but there's different things to do. There's, like, these tapes you have to collect, these um, patches you have to patches, find. Yeah. This... And these prisoners to rescue. And they actually do have more of the story um, yeah, but... if you go and save them. It's completely optional. We used to get stuff like this for free, man. They were called demos. They built hype for a game, which is exactly what this is designed to do. Build hype if it was for just, Phantom If Pain. it was just the one mission, the Ground Zeroes mission, yeah, that's just a demo. But with all the other stuff, it is, there is slightly more content than, than a demo. And I, think, I still agree it's still more expensive. I think £10 would have been the sweet spot, and I would have bought that happily. But I, I still think it's a good... A good, good, uh, a good comparison for it is <clears throat> against um, Dead Rising K-Zero. Yeah. which was the prequel to Dead Rising 2 that came out on Xbox Live before that. Uh, short game, Dead Rising k Zero. you can run through that game in an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, but it had a free roam aspect as well, so you could go off and just have fun if you wanted to in this little 
small area that you were sort of ever able to free roam in. The difference is, Case Zero was 400 Microsoft points, which works out to about five pounds or or less, even. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. And if you sort of weigh up the content between both, I mean, they're both doing the same thing. They both exist to uh, create hype for the actual game that comes out later. I don't know how they can justify charging that much for Grand Zero. Yeah. Man. I do think it is, like I said, I do think it's slightly overpriced, but I think Konami knew that and, you know, suckers like me will buy it, but, you know, I'm. Did, did Patrick go to um, replacing. Uh, what's his face? <laughs> J. David Hayer to Kiefer Sunderland. Is, is that did, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh shit. Speaking of Kiefer Sunderland, <laughs> how, how is this portrayal of, of Snake? Or Naked it's Snake? It's good. It, it doesn't feel forced because he doesn't have that many lines, so when he does speak, he just sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> because I was crushed. I'm not gonna lie. I was crushed when I heard that. Oh no! And hater. I'm, I'm a huge hater. But <laughs> the thing is, it actually kind of makes sense because David Hayer can always reprise his role as Solid Snake, you know. And it, I guess, it doesn't make sense that Solid Snake and Naked Snake both had the same voice and stuff. Well, it, it's it's same. The Japanese version, they do. But I whatever. Don't think he's coming back, to be honest. <laughs> no, I did. For, I oh. yeah. I think those it bridges are burned. Sounded really yeah. Bitter, didn't he's it? He's up in heaven, looking down on us now with Kevin Conroy. <laughs> <laughs> Except Kevin Conroy's coming back for Arkham Knight. But anyway, they've all sweet. got little um, voodoo dolls of Troy Baker, just really wishing he'd fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> cool. So that's Grand Series. Johnny, you've been up to anything else? Bit of Vita, bit of 3DS, playing a bit of Castlevania. The old one on the 3DS. Good Ooh. stuff. Um, that's pretty much it. And a lot, tons and tons of Battlefield. I've put too many hours. Johnny? In Yo. Do you have any games over winter that you just like went, ugh, and had to put down again? Um, okay, five pairs of zeros. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Still playing that. Um, I'm not too sure. Why? Have you got something in mind? No, I just wondered if there was anything that, you know, we've been away for a while, so it can't all be good. Yeah. can't all be roses, man. Well, when the Tales of Exilia came out, because that was actually pretty good, but I, I just put that down and never, never went back to it. Towards the end of last year. I, that was, yeah, that happened, and I just never sort of... Since the PS4 came back, uh, came out, sorry, and I got that, the PS3 hasn't been touched. There's so many good games on there, like Revengeance I didn't play, um, and like Bi- uh, Bioshock Infinite was free as well. There's tons of good free PSN games on the PS3, but I just hadn't played them because it's PS3, I don't want to get back to it. You know, once you've got the new console there, you like just sort of stare at your PS3 and think, Ugh. My PS3's realize, actually had the most playtime over Christmas. Really? Yeah. 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 I've just been, I've just been, Ugh. So yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing. How about you guys? Who's next? Awesome. Yeah, Jamie, man. Talk to me. What have you been up to over our little uh, break period? Uh, I think the standout for me over the time we've been away, and it's the one that I'm a bit late to the party with, and that's The Walking Dead. And that's not yeah. Survival Instinct either. Um, <laughs> Nobody yeah, would have guessed it was Survival Instinct. No. Nobody. I forgot that existed. Survival Instinct. But what I did, um, it's one of those games where I put it off for a while because, you know, it was it was one episode, two episodes and so on. And I wanted the full game at once. I wanted to complete it all in one go. And then over, over Christmas, I think the season pass went cheap. So I just thought, yeah, now's the time. So I just picked that up, and that's just been that's just been the highlight over Christmas for me. And I'm I am glad that I kept it to play in one go, but at the same time it's just like wow, I want more of this. And it's happening now with season two. I'm ignoring it. I'm not going anywhere near it. I've seen episode two of season two is out. I don't want any spoilers. I'm just going to stay well away until the whole thing's out, so I can just go through it all in one go. Oh, I don't mean you're... to cut in, but I'm the same as Jay on that. I did exactly the same, and yeah, fantastic. You guys are doing it wrong, man. No, Dude, I don't wrong. Have sort of content like that. I, I love the format and I love the way it's presented. I think it's nice. It breaks it down for you. But that's just encouraged me to keep playing, if anything, because I know I'm getting bite-sized uh, storylines and parts of the arc overall without it feeling forced and just in, in the way as one big block. It's nice. It's broken down. It's fresh. Okay. Well, what did you, what did you think of Walking Dead Season 1 overall then? I think it's the best thing with the name on it that's existed i think it's better than the graphic novel i think it's better than the tv series which has which has dropped you know season three and then into season four now that's just finished is dreadful but you know i i I think it's the best thing they've wow 
It's just going to go right there, are we? It's going to go right there. <laughs> I'm just going to drop that bomb yeah. and say the end of season I thought, four. I thought season four was good. Yeah, and all right. The, the, um, Spoilers alert. Don't the finale, you dare talk awesome. about anything. Just, yeah, don't, don't give anything away, but save it for your TV podcast that you do on a weekly basis. That TV podcast that doesn't exist. Yet. Yeah, for that fictional TV podcast, save that one away. But yeah, Walking Dead... Um, I, I've also had a really bad experience with games over Christmas and New Year. Um, and that comes in the shape of Thief. Ooh. Right. Ooh. right. It's not on the level of Sonic Lost World bad, but it's one of the worst games I've played in a long time. Why? Wow. Uh, mainly, mainly coming down to this. Now, if somebody like myself has never played a Thief game before, then fair enough. This you. Can- could go into this one fresh it was it was out for the new generation of consoles and you know they were starting again almost with it they were letting you go in blank canvas yeah but the problem i had is that i've played dishonored uh, and okay. despite being on a earlier generation of console despite being three years older it still runs better plays better has a much you know far superior storyline going on for it everything going for it that thief wants and just can't rip off. Well, how much of the how much of the gameplay being better and dishonored is down to the fact that you have superpowers? Well, not, nothing really, because if you, you if you still use weaponry, it's fine, isn't it? It's all still the same. You still got to aim the same way. You've still got to function your character in the same movements. True, yeah. but I mean, I think Thief is made to be more of a pure stealth game, right? So you don't even have a sword. Yeah, but what if you choose to do that in Dishonored? What if you choose to sneak completely? Then it puts it back on a level playing field. That's true. Dishonored is a better game. (laughs) But I think think Metacritic agrees with you there as well. So as much as I don't like Metacritic... The the thing with Metacritic is the reviews came out a few days before the game and I had a pre-ordered copy and I was ready for it. And then I saw the reviews and I thought, okay, I don't normally read into reviews, but this is a bit worrying. So I did cancel my pre-order. It was only that weekend when I got bored and thought, okay, I can pick it up maybe now. And I just, I, you know, I'm not richer for the experience. I'm far poorer, like, <laughs> literally, like, in both senses of it. Like, I wanted to complete it because that's how I feel about a game. I feel that if you don't complete it, it's even more of a waste of your money. So I, I just forced myself to stay up late and finish it. Uh, you know, I never never felt for the main character i never felt driven to do anything i just felt a bit lost playing it and it's a shame because dishonored again you know it's, you're not gonna you're not set up with you know you're the next mario or lara croft or anything are you you still feel like a bit of a nobody but at least you wanted to drive forward yeah okay hey, well welcome. i don't mean to i don't mean to circle back right but back on your walking dead point the reason i said you're doing it wrong is because now you have to wait an entire year. I have to wait an entire year before I can talk to you guys about season two. If you play it episode by episode, you get one episode every two months, right? And then in that like month in between, that's when you speculate as to what's going to happen next. That's when yeah, you but... talk about it and stuff. You're like, oh, what choice did you make? Oh, man, I wonder where this is going to go and stuff. This but is... Then... I've... I've been playing it along the same time as uh, someone else I know, and we've just been bouncing ideas back and forth. Like that's half the fun of this game series, man. I'm surprised. Let's say, on it. So let's say an episode comes out on the first of March. Yep. You play it, you complete it within two hours on yep. that day. You then have to wait until the first of June. Yep. Now in the gaming world, I've played about twenty different games in, in that space, oh, yeah. and I've forgotten what the fuck was going on. It's two hours you can easily do another playthrough if you want to refresh yourself well, why, and they do, the you do another playthrough though they do you recap do the of each episode things will come back to you and you'll go oh yeah i made that decision but i don't want to make that decision now well, uh, yeah. i'm it, waiting for it you can fuck off with your spoilers it, and you it, can leave it, me it to it. <laughs> at the moment they've got it down perfect right because an episode of walking dead season two will come out one month i'll play that and then the next month an episode of the wolf among us will come out and they're just alternating that way. So every month I'm getting my telltale goodness, man. It's it feels good. I feel like it's See, bad to wait, man. But my concern is if I played a game and then waited two months for the next one, I may have something else I'm playing at the time, and so I can't dedicate my time to that one, even though I really want to play it. So I don't know. Say I don't know, GTA for example. That took up a lot of my time last year. I'd hate for that to happen, and then. What, what, what I find is that I'll probably end up pushing that game further and further back and go, okay, well, I'll play them 
you know, when the next next one comes out. It's like a two and a half to three hour investment of your time to play an episode of Walking Dead, man. It's not going to take all yeah. night, Ethan. Like, you get home from work, play some Walking Dead, yeah. the new episode. Oh my god, that was amazing. Now I'll go back to whatever I was playing. Mm, I don't know. I, I prefer to play it, like, I don't like having to, I don't like, um, I suppose a lot of the series I, do, I watch anyway, um, as well as plays. I like sitting down and having a big session of it rather than little chunks. True. I guess it, it works well for Telltale both ways as well because they have the people like me that are like playing it as the episodes come out. So they've got that revenue stream coming there. And then there's the other half of the crowd that want to play it when it's complete. So as soon as the last episode comes out, they'll have a massive spike in sales where everybody oh, who wanted to play it all together come in. If, if that was an issue and you said to me, if you don't buy them as they come out, then they can't afford to continue with it. I'd still, I'd still pay up front. I just wouldn't play them until I had all of them. Yeah. Fair play, man. Cool. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to add, Jamie? Um, just that, really, I'm just playing a bit of Infamous at the moment, trying to do my platinum run. I don't normally oh, do that sort of thing. But I love I'm that second so, side, man. so into Infamous right now that... You just yeah, quickly talk about it, because... Through... Yeah, because well, then, then I don't have yeah. to talk about it as well, because I, I just finished it recently as well, so... You got it as well? Do it. Well, I don't technically okay. have it. Jamie loaned it to me okay <laughs> yes because cool. jamie has it twice <laughs> one cycle rounding yeah long story never mind um yeah um i've ended, yeah so i've ended up paying for it quite a few times okay. right but no i mean i was always a big fan of the infamous series mm-hmm. uh i preferred the first one um i can't really put my finger on that anymore as to why it might have something to do with the electric web swinging <laughs> Something like that. I don't I know. I really like the electric web, web swinging in, swinging in uh, Infamous Two. If I can but, speak yeah. words, I love the first but one. Anyway. The point I was I was talking to Ben the other day, and the reason it's progressed and the reason it's a lot more enjoyable now, and, and you can feel a bit more connected, is just is Troy Baker's portrayal of Delson. Yep. <laughs> and there's really? despite something so real and so horrible going on within his world, he still manages to keep his quirky attitude about him now i'm not sure how how it will change going down the line on the evil playthrough but i've just started my uh evil karma playthrough now and the first choice you make within the game has a massive impact on that next cutscene that just opened it just changed delson again and i just thought wow he this could this could create a whole new game out of the same game just by choosing a different path and you know we're not true crime levels of changing paths but that you know I don't think <laughs> anything will be that level of changing paths again, man. Yeah. No, that was too much. Monsters. I'm not going to do the evil karma path and then have Christopher Walken <laughs> at the end of the game as a dragon or something. <laughs> the only uh, criticism I heard about Infamous was uh, was actually the choices. Like They felt just very black and white still, and they didn't really mesh very well. But other than that, I heard it was absolutely... you know. But Infamous, Infamous was never about subtle choices. It was always about yeah. sort of black and white, good and evil choices. Mm. Well, they're because... hard cut, aren't they? Like the start of the first game, do you feed the people or do you take it for yourself? And yeah. the start of this one, do you do you sacrifice the tribe or do you you know put your neck on the line yourself? At, at their core, they are superhero stories, and superhero stories have never been the sort of deepest man with their sort of context. They have been very black and white in like yeah, who's it's good true. and evil and stuff. So for for what it does, it does it really well. This one is markedly more realistic in its approach. And its characters than the previous ones were. Mm. But a lot of that is down to their new motion capture technology. And as Jamie said, Troy Baker's performance. which is just And just Seattle funny. on the whole is so believable. Yeah. It's People are so saying true. it's like the best, the best you know, city made in a game so far sort of thing. Like really high. Yeah. And the powers of um, giving you the options to, to scale and, and move. Oh, know. man. We, we have to talk about this. What was your favorite power in the game? I mean, once they're all powered up, I really enjoyed the neon power. Mate, I am there with you, man. Yeah, definitely, because when, when you're, once you're full karma, you unlock the ability to, to constantly run at the full speed. Yeah. And that just made the map. Man. You know, I never used fast travel in the game. I just used the endless sprint, and I thought... I didn't even know there was fast travel. Yeah, yeah. So. I was just the same as you, endless sprint <laughs> everywhere, man, over all the buildings and stuff. But then awesome. I've, I've 100%ed the map now, so it's, you can do what wow. you want on it. I have to play this game. You have to, definitely. Yeah, really, really, gonna... really good, man. Yeah. Good stuff. Awesome. Cool. Uh, I'm going to stop fanboying on Infamous now. You can 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Janny. That's what I wanted to hear. Hello. What have you been up to over the last three months, dude? <sighs> what have I been up to? What have I been up to? I don't know. Um... Buying shares in Tinder. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my stock had totally rose. Um, well, hey, hey. I suppose I've been playing a, I've been playing a bit of mix of games. Um, PS4, mainly sports games. Uh, nothing's really so far absolutely gripped me on there. Um, like, you know, I haven't really been too impressed with the PS4, the games they've been releasing on the PlayStation Plus. I haven't got into any of them really. Um, so what was, what was that one? Uh, I can't remember what it's called now. Don't starve. Or Dead Nation. Like... No, Dead Nation. Dead Daylight? Nation. Not no, Shoot not Daylight. Night. Um. Oh, Outlast. 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 Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like that one. Um, I did. I really enjoyed it. Completed it. The end Are you a show. survival horror player though? Because or... I can't play it. Well, well, there's that. There's that aspect, but it didn't look good. It, it looked awful. Absolutely awful. I didn't. Didn't see the point. Any standards are crazy. Oh come on! You can't tell me that's a good-looking game for it. It's a ported, it's a ported PC game, isn't it? And even and it then, shows. They... Yeah. yeah, it's direct port. They haven't done anything. Well, if they had, they did a poor, poor show of it. But I think that's that's kind of what I'm a bit annoyed at. There's been nothing so far, and I'm treading on thin ice here because <laughs> I'm going to backtrack a bit. My next words are going to be infamous if you say what I think you're going to say. Yeah, that's why I started backtracking because I haven't played. I mean, I've seen Scott playing Infamous and it looks amazing. So I I backtrack on that. But on the yeah, I I thought that was pretty poor. Anyway, um, I didn't get into Don't Starve, and again, that's another PC port. Dead Nation was actually on the PS3 and I think the Xbox 360 as well. I think Dead so, Nation was PlayStation exclusive, but it was yeah. definitely on PS3. It was. On, it was one of the games Starve. offered up as a freebie when the network had those issues with hacking that time as well. That's yeah, true. That's... That and Infamous 1, I think. Yeah. Well, you could choose, I think. You one. had a choice of it, a lot. Yeah. You got to, yeah. I think most people chose Dead Nation and Infamous, but I think they'll be playing it and other stuff. Anyway, um, so yeah, actually, one of the... Actually, I have been playing A Real Reborn, the, the beta. The beta. Nice. That's out. Uh, when are you uploading this video? Um, this podcast? Uh, it will be within a day of recording it, man. I'm not slow right. anymore. Well, the second phase of the of the beta is out on Friday the 4th of April. Um, and your character carries over to... And I think it's getting released the following week. So that actually plays really well. And it looks... It's one of those games that you, uh, you can tell is using... Um, so if you're listening to this podcast the day it goes up, uh, the second phase of the beta is going up today... Make your character on Goblin server and come play with us. Yeah. yeah so Friday the fourth, that's the date, isn't it? Yeah. They'll Friday get the the, um, the. I've just downloaded the Realm Reborn beta on the PS4, so that's yeah. live over the weekend. So. I got my max level complete. character on that server, so I can come help you guys. It'll be awesome. Yeah. Goblin, yeah. So, Goblin. Goblin server. Goblin. Anyway, yeah. sorry. So, Carry on, Jenny. Yeah, that that's been taking up some of my time, so I'm actually looking forward to that. Um, and so I'm just trying to think what else. Oh, Mercenary Kings that came out this week. Uh, Johnny, there you yes. go. This in PlayStation Plus, and you got that game for yeah. free. Yeah, that, that's that. This yeah, that was quite a surprise. I wasn't expecting that because I just saw it in. Is it on PlayStation Plus or is it just? Oh no, it is PlayStation Plus, but it wasn't part of the. Monthly thing was it? I think. Yeah, it's it's the yeah, it's, it's, free it's the April. April free game for PS4. Otherwise, it would have been fifteen ninety nine. Yeah, bloody hell! Yeah, I wouldn't have paid that much. For it. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mercenary Kings. No, but it is good though, isn't it? We played yeah, a little it's, bit. It's it's heavily borrowed from Metal Slug, and that's the first thing that cut, that drew me to it. But I think it plays really well. I really really like it. Yeah, um, it's, it's got a, a really of... good mix of uh, Monster Hunter. I know you don't play Monster Hunter, Janny, but it's got a good mix of like there's like a hub world and you select missions, go out, complete the missions, gather materials, build better guns and well, knives gonna, and armor. We're gonna and have a great time as well, aren't we? Yeah, we're gonna. Yes, give, yeah. We, you could play four player online, and we can. Uh, we'll see if we get video up on that because it is quite crazy. Um, and you said it's, it's made by the same guys who did Scott Pilgrim, um, the game. So 
you can you can see that from the the style of the game. There's also some nice little references as well. Like uh, they got this, it's like um, Metal Gear Solid, where he's talking. Yeah, the codec. The, the, the codec. Yeah. So it's, that's uh, it's, a, it's a nice little touch, <laughs> but that's that's quite fun. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I haven't really. All right. Any. Not really played a lot. Any real shit that you've played over the break? Oh, hang on. Sorry. There was there is the HD remix of Final Fantasy X and X2, which, although I haven't put a lot of hours in, the FMVs look absolutely incredible, and they they weren't wanting before. You know, they they used the whole of the PS2, but. Yeah, the FMVs look incredible. How do the character I've... models look? Because they uh, they upgraded all of them, didn't they? Yeah, everything's. Yeah. It, it's all better. In game, it's it's all better. It's a standard. It looks like as you what you'd expect from a HD uh, mm. a HD remix, but it's the FMVs that really show out. The thing the thing that I like about HD remixes, right, is they often look the way I remember the games looking. So, yeah. like when I play a HD remix, that's how I remember the game looking. And then when I play the actual game on the system it was on, like if I played Final Fantasy X on PlayStation 2 now, it'll be all jaggy and pixelated and stuff. And I'll be like, wait, what? I, st- I remember yeah. it looking the way the HD remix looks. Like, <laughs> almost like that's... does you a favor and plays to your nostalgia goggles, which is awesome. That's the thing. And it, without going too, too over the top, without having to design it from the ground up. Um, and I, that's why I suppose in game to me, I've not noticed as much. Even though I know there's differences, that you know, it's I know it's it looks a lot better, but because I haven't looked side by side comparisons, I I can't make that judgment call, which sounds ridiculous, but it's true. But yeah, FMVs incredible. Right, biggest pile of shit. Um, hmm. <laughs> you are gonna say Ground yeah, Zeroes? You can do it. No, you can no, do it. It's not fair. No, no, no. That's not fair. I'm not gonna use say Ground Zeroes because it's not my genre. It's I didn't play very much of it. I played. Must have played about half an hour an hour which some people could have finished you know what six times in that <laughs> speed run <laughs> um oh that's a tough one without uh, i'm just trying to think what came out in that time and it's, i'm really struggling here what about you ben we'll, we'll jump the gun on yours what's, what's your worst so far the worst game i played i didn't play anything bad nothing bad <laughs> oh you lie not even kidding oh. man not even kidding didn't play any bad games over the three months, I only played games that I wanted to play. Oh, I know. This is gonna might be a bit controversial. Killzone. I have to say Killzone. Ooh, can I say Killzone too then as well? It's a, it's a lo- <laughs> we can both shit. say Killzone, yeah. Can Can someone explain to me the point in Killzone? Yeah, it looks like it looks good. It looks good, but the campaign shit. Yep. Online is so dull and so boring. And I'm fed up of dying as well because I'm pretty rubbish at it. But it is really dull. There's nothing, again, nothing that made me want to go, guys, let's play some more Killzone tonight. I was just like, do we have to play this? I just didn't like it. And <laughs> you I, were getting I, angry. <laughs> it was just ridiculous. The maps, the maps are so crap. You get all these, you know, there's a lot of corridors. It, it is a broken game, and. I, I, they should they should be ashamed of themselves really <laughs> <They came out. laughs> quite a lot of um, quite a lot of bottlenecking in there yeah well. it's a, it's yeah. horrendous it's horrendous but anyway um that's that that's going to be my controversial shit game of the year all right well I'll, i'm going to go ahead and agree with you on that one because i that's probably is the worst game i've played in the last three months as well so that's my bad game out of the way let's talk about the good games that i played yeah. um I finished Bravely Default for the 3DS. Talk to me. How that was game it? was fantastic. That game is Final Fantasy 13 to me, man. That is the next Final Fantasy game. If Final Fantasy 13 didn't happen and they said, here's Bravely Default, it's fun, and they called it Final Fantasy 13, I would have been absolutely fine with it being Final Fantasy 13. Well, I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. It's yes, that it good that it could have been a main installment in the Final Fantasy franchise, and I would have been okay with that being the next installment. I need to get that as well, I don't know. Really, really good game. I will admit, right? Yeah, of course you can, man. I'm I'm finished. But um, I will give a little caveat with that. The second half of the story, without giving too many spoilers, um, depending on what kind of stories you like, you might hate it. Right? Because from a certain angle, it can be seen as incredibly lazy. Um, Really? Yeah. I mean... 
I, like I said, I don't really want to give spoilers to the story because it is a really good game that everyone should play. But the second half of the story from, from one angle can be seen as really lazy. Um, I personally didn't see it that way. I, I really enjoyed what they did. Um, but that's because it kind of fell under the kind of stories that I really like to read and like experience. Mm. So I really enjoyed it. But to have that as like the little warning. The first half of the story is really good classic RPG storyline pretty formulaic and like some things will happen that you kind of guess and see coming but the gameplay and the charm that is going on at the same time you just see you can look straight past it but the second half of the game is going to be the decider where like you either think to yourself well this is just lazy bullshit or this is actually really clever what they've done so i i fall into the latter camp but i can see i can see the people's points from the first camp so um, I also played Dark Souls 2. Oh my yes. god. That game was finished it. awesome. I did finish it, yeah. Um, my god. It's, it's really better enjoyable. Better than Dark Souls 1? No, it's not better than Dark Souls 1. Really? Uh, it's also not better than Demon's Souls. It's easily the worst in the Soul series, right? Really? What makes you say that? <laughs> I really... Um, the, the drawback is, right, it can be the worst game in the Soul series... But at the same time, still be better than most other games, mm-hmm. just by virtue of being a Souls game. So it's still really enjoyable. I would still recommend it to anyone who enjoyed Dark Souls and Demon Souls. But of course, yeah. Personally, so what, I thought it was the weakest in the series. So what didn't you like about it? Um, there's a lot of issues that I have, and I don't know whether it's down to me just being better at the series now than I was before, but. Most of the bosses in the game were trash, right? Like, I just absolutely destroyed them. And it sounds like I'm bragging right now, but it's actually disappointing. Like, I think 50% of the bosses, maybe more, I beat on my first try, like, without breaking a sweat. Right. Oh, wow. There's a couple of bosses that I beat without even taking damage. Um, There was... There's also a boss in the game... That it's just like a really boring fight, um, but he has like a, an in, innate flame ability. So whenever you're close to him, you're just getting like damage over time done to you. The smell of demon. Yeah. Yeah, you you know who I'm talking about, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which the fight it's not really fun because there's no like epic dodges you have to make or anything, but you're just constantly taking damage through his passive ability, which just makes it really annoying to be honest. Yeah. And the boss, there's another boss after that that just felt so much like just a video game boss that it just was dreadful. Really? And that, that one's easily the worst boss in the game, yeah. Um, I'm not gonna... Well, I guess it doesn't matter, really, because there's no story to speak of. It's this big demon in a lake of lava. Yeah. And he just walks up to your platform that you're on. And then just start slamming his hands down on it. And all you do is roll out of the way and then attack his hand when it's on the ground. Very like, generic. That is it. That is the fight. That is all you do for the entire battle. It doesn't feel like the one-on-one skill fest that like Dark Souls bosses usually feel like. I see. So that... It, but I heard even tailored though... it more to a Western yeah. audience. I, don't no, know. I think what they've done is they've made it more accessible. I've heard that the overall the game is easier, but there are hardcore challenges. Like there's these things called uh, bonf- uh, bonfire aesthetics, which basically make the area into new game plus mode without being in new game plus. It just makes yeah. all the enemies a lot harder. That's, that's... So you can increase the difficulty if you like, and get better rewards. Well, the the enemies in this one have limited sport respawn, Respons. don't they? And then when you yeah. have that bonfire thing, it brings them all back. At harder because a lot of people level. were grinding through k- killing them all off and then bringing them back as new game plus for that area yeah, yeah. so you've they've all got 15 spawns each so you can kill them 15 times and then they just stop showing up until you use the bonfire aesthetic to increase the levels dif- the area's difficulty up to new game plus level and then it will reset their spawns back at 15 which is kind of cool because new game plus there are a lot of items that are exclusive to New Game Plus. Like, they won't drop them unless they're at New Game Plus level. Um, Mm. And enemy placement changes as well, and sometimes there's more enemies. So, it's it's pretty pretty fun. I've tried to stay away from New Game Plus as much as possible, because 
I'm playing through on the PlayStation 3, and I want to make the PC sort of my main for this game. So I've been playing. I played through once as a sort of strength-based character with uh, enough magic to cast great magic weapon on myself, so that I could fight with a great sword that's enchanted. That was how I made my way through the game the first time, uh, and now I started my second run as a caster, uh, which feels a bit underpowered. And maybe that's just because casters were overpowered in Demon Souls and Dark Souls. Yeah. But yeah, the the actual sorcery casters not that great in this one. Or I mean, it, if if you know how to play a caster, you'll still be fine. But you're not going to be overpowered the way you were before. Well, how far are you? Because obviously the latest spells are usually the best, aren't they? Uh, when sort of halfway through my second run with the caster, wow. um, I'll probably finish that before Dark Souls comes. Out, Dark Souls Two comes out. Blah, blah, comes out for Three PC. Yeah, and I'll, I'll probably have started a faith build run by then as well. <laughs> so, enough. or maybe I'll save a faith build for my first run on the PC version. But okay. oh, I'm waiting for the PC version, so. I, I don't want anyone to be put it. off by me saying it's the worst in the yeah. series yeah. because it's still better than most other things. But I just found that there was more charm in Dark Souls 1 and Demon Souls than there is in this game. And again, I'm not I'm not trying to put it down or anything. I just I feel like it's not quite as good. But enough about that. Let's uh, let's move on to our actual topics for today. Because I think we've uh, we've covered the three month gap well enough. If people want to know more, they can leave us a comment and we can ask answer them there. Um, yes. So the main talking point that we've got for this week is Assassin's Creed Unity, which shocker Ben doesn't really know anything about other than the fact that it got leaked and then instantly confirmed like the same day, pretty much. I'm with so, you on that one, Ben. I I don't know anything about it, and I so, couldn't care less. Have you guys at least seen the trailer for it? No. Nope. nope. Yes, I didn't see the trailer it. either. But Jamie, okay, luckily, has actually done his homework, and he knows everything. So Jamie, fill us in about Assassin's Creed Unity, man. You fucking having a laugh? Nope. <laughs> That's, uh, nothing's changed in three months, right? Um, Johnny, well, to be honest, Johnny was probably the one with more info on this. The point of the big topic this week, because um, we are we're late to the party with this Assassin's Creed news. It was last week, Sorry. Um, so if only we'd done the podcast last week, we might have actually yeah. made the topic quite fresh. But no, the point um, and the questions I want to ask, really. Okay, yeah. So they've they've revealed this Assassin's Creed Unity. They're, they're confirming it's set in France. Blah de blah. Nothing really else has come out of that, and that's mainly like Johnny was saying earlier before we recorded. They probably wanted to try and keep this for E3, but they've been forced into confirming the game. Potato. Now the worry is is an annual release of of I was going to say Killzone. It's an annual release of Assassin's Creed. Is it killing the series? Would you like to see it a bit more time spent on the game? Judging and, because I know obviously they're not finishing one game and then moving on to the next. They're obviously in production long before that, and they've got the game working through long before that. But are you getting sick of seeing Assassin's Creed? It sounds like Gianni yes. is. Yes. Just um, because it's there every year. It's it's one of these where I remember them saying it, and I think it was after Revelations or Brotherhood, one of those. Um, oh. That's when I stopped giving a shit. It was like. I don't know. For me, my favourite has always been 2, because it improved a lot of 1, which was great, but it improved a lot of 1, and it had a good story behind it, blah, blah. But it has gone downhill since then, and it's so... I Every year, there's more and more bugs, and that's what I, I don't... If you're going to at least do something, like FIFA, at least when they bring it out each year, my, it may still have some bugs, but not half as much as these, and the game's still playable... They keep releasing games that are broken and incredibly frustrating because of the bugs. And so I have no interest in, in Assassin's Creed because they're pushing they're pushing for this yearly or this annual um release. And it, to me it's not working. It's just they're just milking a series. That's all it is. See, I mean, I would say is annual is an annual release killing the series? Probably not. Because if it was, they wouldn't be doing it, right? Uh, I believe one of their lead producers says something along the lines of, like, 
we'd be stupid to not release it annually because people keep buying it and it's making us a lot of money. I'm paraphrasing there. That's not his exact words, but he said something along those lines. If that's true, if they are making decent sales every year and they're making money, it's going to continue. That's just the way it's going to be. Like They're going to keep releasing games as long as people keep buying them. So, But is it decent? Well, again, I mean... When did, what was the last Assassin's Creed game I played? I played Assassin's Creed 2. That was the last Assassin's Creed game I played. Is it that bad for you? Yeah, because at the end of Assassin's Creed 2, I was pretty much done with it, man. Like, I had a pretty pretty cool ending and stuff. And then the sequel was just like, oh, um, it's going to be like a spin-off title. So I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to play that. And then there was another spin-off title and another spin-off title. So I was like, okay, well, hurry up and give me the main sequel that I want. Then they gave us the main sequel, and it wasn't the main sequel I wanted. I wanted a main sequel where the main protagonist, who I've actually forgotten his name... Um, For which one? The original Assassin's Creed main protagonist. Oh, no, 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 the main protagonist who's reliving his answer. Oh, Desmond. Desmond, yeah. Desmond, oh, Desmond, yeah. Desmond, I, wanted, I wanted a game where Desmond sorted his shit out in the future, and it was kind of sort of infamous style, like in a futuristic setting, but basically what Watch Dogs is. I wanted Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed to be Watch Dogs, but it never happened, so I just lost touch with the series. I always gave way more of a shit about the stuff that was going on outside of the Animus in the future. Like, that's where the core of the story was to me. But the series pushed it towards what's going on inside the Animus is what you should be caring about the most. I am the opposite to you, man. I it never really shit, never really tweaked, tweaked to me. So. <laughs> I hate so what's, back to Desmond. Johnny, yeah. what, like, what's been the standout of the series for you, though? Um, well, I haven't played it, but I, Assassin's Creed 4. Black Flag, like that just looks like a ton of fun. I've watched quite a lot of videos on it and uh, the PS4 stream feature. I just sometimes just whack it on and watch people play it, and that's sad because I haven't bought it yet. Buy a game guide and then you could have finished it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> just read it, pretend it was. Yeah, but no, I think that's actually probably the. Well, I think it looks like the best one with all the sea combat and upgrading your ship, and just the world looks really cool. It's like a mix what? of uh, Wind Waker and Assassin's Creed. Because my favorite so far is two, but. Okay. I seem to be but, the only one who still holds number one as as my favorite. I got re- it got really re- uh, repetitive for me. I, yeah. I I bowed out halfway through. I thought this is just the same stuff. I mean, yeah, but it was groundbreaking. But that and Bioshock just kickstarted the Xbox 360, I think, and it just really brought that next generation at the time. Yeah, uh, I agree. But oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, going back to number four, then the problem we had is you wanted that story from number two, and you wanted to carry on learning about Desmond, whatever. Spoiler alert, obviously, the end of number three doesn't end so well for Desmond. So that's done with now. Mm -hmm. The problem number three had is it wasn't a finished product. And that's something Gianni was touching on is the bugs have been an issue. And number three made it unplayable. Now, I haven't gone back to see if they fixed them. But what I have done is I've moved on to number four. And it's wiped out memories, like bad experiences with number three. Yeah. Um, I my think... problem, sorry, my problem yeah. with Assassin's Creed 4, I would have totally played that game, but why is it an Assassin's Creed game? Like, that just looks like an awesome pirate adventure game to me, right? That's, and I yeah. would have totally played it if it was an awesome pirate adventure game, but the fact that they've tried to shoehorn Assassin's Creed bollocks into it makes me not want to play it. Like, I don't give a fuck there... who's in the Animus there re- reliving these pirate memories. Just give me an awesome pirate game, man, and I will play it. The present day stuff in that game is worse than number three's bugs, right? It's, it's an issue. It is an issue, and it does make the game almost unplayable without actually breaking. But when you're when you're in the game, when you're playing as Edward, um, the game Edward. comes to it's Edward, isn't it? And the, yeah. I mean, questioning myself then. It's um, <laughs> it has you play a pirate who stumbles across, uh, stumbles upon the the creed. You know, they're not, it's not like he's born into it. It's not like a rite. It's not like a passage. You know, he, he comes across it. And in any true pirate fashion, he investigates to see if he can get rich off of it, basically, and see what he can do with it. But then he becomes invested. The characters 
you know, that he gets involved with, it just becomes one big story that you have to follow through with. And, and a game should never, you should never start a sentence about a game by saying you need the first couple of hours to break it in or like after 10 hours, it's really good. Yeah, because if it doesn't start off strong, like fuck it, but basically. With the PS4 launch, I didn't really have any other options in that action platform genre. And so I did want to see it through because I just spent a lot of bloody money on it. Yeah. And I'm glad I did. And it's not going to be something that everybody can do and like invest that time to get through those first, I'd say five or six hours. And then, then you're good. Then it's uh, plain sailing or whatever, as they would say. I see what you did there. See what I did. But yeah. <laughs> I the problem with number three, when, when it worked, was that I didn't like the, the naval combat. And I've had comments about that before in conversations where it's like, oh, no, it gets good once you know how to do it. And like, yeah, I learned how to do it in Assassin's Creed 4 because I wanted to and I wanted to get past it. And it became a good part of the game. It became really strong. You're right, it doesn't make you an assassin, but it shows you what the creed was like during that time. And it, it moves on with that. It gives you for all the Blackbeard story and everything. No, it's good. The, the one thing I was going to say, going back to what you just said, I mean, with this sort of game that it is, five or six hours is a long time. Um, now, or even if it's three or four, for this for the style of game, it's, it's quite a long time to get into it. Um, I, I remember saying something very similar about Lost Odyssey, but that's a 100-hour RPG, you know, turn-based RPG. So you're not going to put those hours in unless you're a fan of, of the genre. Um, so for me, that's... I don't know. I, that, I, could, I wouldn't personally want to put the hours in um, I'm especially in my uh, the position I'm in. I'm, I don't like the franchise. I don't like the way they're running the franchise. Um, and three definitely killed everything for me. Even what about the, um, What about the the uh, new setting then for Unity, the French Revolution? Is that that's have... that's too late. Because... That should have been that should have come straight after number two. They shouldn't. And the other the Brotherhood and Revelation should have been DLC, not standalone titles. There was nothing in there. Really, it was too popular. People were buying it, but yeah, yeah but from from a content point of view, there was literally it. The, there was very little in there. There was nothing new, apart from they had that the tower defense game, which was a bit shit. A bit it was totally shit. You know but, what worries me about yeah. uh, this the Assassin's Creed game? I mean, you know, there's two coming this year. There's one for the PS3 and 360 called something where you play as a Templar, apparently. And then there's the PS4 and Xbox One but, uh, game, which is completely different. So the, there's actually two games coming out this year. But the main Assassin's one Creed. is the the PS4, Xbox. Yeah, they've one. been working on it for yeah. three years. Yeah. So, so what they've done though, and it's, I mean, I'm not going to spoil Bioshock Infinite, but if you've played it and you finished it, you'll understand the whole. There's always a lighthouse. There's always a so and so, right? Something similar with Assassin's Creed in number four is that the the Animus project now. They're trying to make films out of people's historical, you know, or their ancestors and stuff. So that's what you're doing. You're you're there to make a to to be a part of a pirate film by tapping into your ancestral mm. memory. Okay. So they're it's ancestral, right? Not ancestral. Right. We don't want that. <laughs> so, well, it might have been ancestral. <laughs> I'm getting inside Moving on. somehow. But yeah, so that's what they're doing, and that's just meant they can they've unlocked every door possible now. Because you can just you can be like oh that, we've got this and you know this history line now we can go do that we can go do anything so they're gonna be around for a while. Uh, it's so disappointing, man. the The premise of Assassin's Creed is just at this point it's just played out. Like the whole animus aspect is just played out, and it's a shame because the games play well. Like I'll tell you what I would enjoy. I would enjoy a game. That's basically Assassin's Creed, but set in Japan around the same era as... Have you ever seen an anime called Samurai X? No, I, I haven't. You no, haven't? No, it, it sort of takes place around sort of the fall of the Samurai era. The Last Samurai, you've seen that movie, yeah? Yeah, of course. Fair yeah. Gully, yeah. Yeah, that... Avatar, yeah? Yeah, that movie, right? Yeah. For contest. So, an Assassin's Creed game set in Japan around the same time period as The Last Samurai was set. Would be Eventually perfect. we'll get there. Eventually we'll get there. They'll run out of ideas. I don't to want the anime shit. shit, though. I want it to just be a game kind of like Tenchu, where it's set in that time period. Tell me a story in that time period, and I'll give a fuck about it. If it's, I... oh, we're going to make a ninja movie, go back in fucking the Animus and record your ancestors being ninjas, so I don't you give a shit about that. you then, Ben. 
No, you I'm no done. In its current format, I am done with the Assassin's Creed franchise. What about Mongolians? Mongolia, Assassin's Creed Mongolia. Would you care about Mongolia? <laughs> I would play it if it didn't have an animus and it didn't have a trite reliving your ancestors' memory storyline. I'm done with that format, man. And unless they change it up, this is why I'm quite excited for Watch Dogs, even though that recent trailer looked a bit shit. Um, because it looks similar to Assassin's Creed. It's got the same sort of gameplay style, but everything's new. There is no shitty animus bullshit in it. It's a completely new, fresh idea with a similar gameplay system. And I'm down for it. I'm going to buy Watch Dogs, and hopefully it will be exactly what I want it to be. But I never, you never know, man. But Ben, I think you should just wait until, uh, until Unity comes out, or just wait until E3, wait until they show some more, because I think it's going to... It's going to be impressive, at least, with what they show with the technology, you know, because this is only next gen. With the, you see like a brief glimpse on the trailer of um, about like like three hundred people all gathered round. Like you see it very briefly, but it looks uh, pretty impressive. Three hundred people that are just going to stand there with their swords out, waiting for me to counter them when they come one yep. at a time. Yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. It's going to be oh, fun. Anyway. Assassin's Dynasty Warriors. God damn it, man! I love Dynasty Warriors. I'm getting right. good, uh, Dynasty Warriors eight. Sorry, oh, I want to get it too. You have to let me know how it is, man. Getting on the Vita. Oh, I'm asked yeah. as well. It should be good. It should be good. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, I want to get some Game of the Year predictions from you guys. Uh, I know it's quite early to be shouting them out now, but just prospective Game of the Year from what you've played so far and from what you know is coming out, what do you think is going to be Game of the Year this year? I just... Ballpark, just first thing that comes to your mind. Johnny. I'll start. Ground no, Zeroes. Okay. <laughs> cool story, bro. Jamie. Uh, Destiny. Jenny. Oh, yeah. shit, you good. bastard. Um. Ah, oh, shit. I don't know. Mario Kart. Fuck it. It's, that's fine. That counts. I'm gonna go ahead. I still have hope, so I'm gonna say Watch Dogs. Nah. Mm. We'd like I'm it not, to be. I'm not convinced. Convinced. I don't <laughs> change my to Assassin's Creed Unity. I think it's gonna be good. Yeah. All right. Assassin's Creed Unity. Jamie, what was yours? Destiny. Destiny and Mario Kart from Jenny. Or Smash Bros. Or Smash Bros. Pick one. Uh, we don't even know if Smash Mario Bros. Kart. will come out this year. Mario Kart. I'm going to go with Mario Kart because I'm cool. excited. Uh, and I'm saying Watch Dogs. So we'll keep a note of those and we'll see how it goes, man. Uh, and that is it for Talking Points this week. We just have Flash news to come. So, Jamie. Yo. Give me your Flash news, baby. Do you know, the, the first bit of Flash News, like, welcome back to Flash News. I wrote down something to investigate because it's only just broken now. And then I just ran out of time. Sorry. All I will say is Amazon have confirmed they've got a console on the way. It's going to be called, like, Fire TV. Um, oh. It looks like some weird little box thing with a remote. It looks a bit like Now TV. But the, uh, uh, we'll get more is about that. And I'll try and do a big bit next week then if I can. Okay, cool. Is that the Ouya rival, basically? I, basically? I don't know what they're doing. I think it is. Um, yeah. But no, so we'll we'll try and get a bit more on it ready for next week, and we'll investigate cool. a bit further because I think they're already taking pre-orders for ninety nine dollars on Am- Amazon in America. So we'll see. Uh, next up, going back to Smash Bros a little bit, then um, something in the rumor mill. There's this guy. His name's Ruben Langdon, um, and he's I know like Ruben a... Langdon. You do, yeah. He's a mocap actor and voice actor. He was Dante in Devil May Cry. He's been yeah. in a few things. So he was stunt coordinator on a few TV shows as well, but in the gaming world, things like The Last of Us and all of Nathan Drake's stuff in Uncharted. Now, he has had some sort of interview where he's commenting on voicing Raiden and how he's happy that he's finally got to do that. Now, a lot of the speculation is that he's going to be in Smash Bros. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Yeah, so Raiden might show up in there. We had, you know, we had Snake, so it's not a good fit. It could happen. Um, no, some comments were surrounding the possibility of it being for PlayStation All Stars, but I don't. I think that's just somebody who invested in that game a bit and doesn't realise they're the only one left playing it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, old news. News is old news. Drive Club game director, right? Uh, so he left the Evolution Studios. So that's a bit worrying because we still haven't got a date for the game that's been postponed, what like twenty times already now. Yeah. Um, it's still going to be a freebie to PlayStation Plus gamers. They're still promising that, so you get that on top. You, obviously, you can so upgrade. It sucks, no one cares. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, they, they'll be the full, they'll be the full retail version, and then the PlayStation Plus version, won't they? So they're not going to have all yeah. the perks to getting the freebie version. 
So we'll keep a closer eye on that. As like I said, we still don't have a date. It's worrying for the project altogether. Um, they did say 2014 though, so they seem pretty confident. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From launch to spring to throwing a dart at the wall somewhere, blindfolded basically now, that's what's happened. <laughs> um, just a little bit of news for the only people still playing Wii U now, me and the other five. Um, yeah, Nintendo really? have released Game Boy Advance games onto the virtual console. Um, so Ooh, I'm excited. What have you got? I get to go, uh, you get to go back on the likes of F-Zero, Max, uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, brilliant. Advance Wars, give me some of that any yeah. time of day. Awesome. Uh, Golden Sun, man. Golden oh, Sun. sweet. <gasps> oh, my God. And I mean, they're all retailing. That Here's is the, the best game on your system right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they, they, they launched it with Super Mario Kart SNES Edition, which is still up there with the DS one as the best version. So. I would agree. But yeah, Super Mario Advance 3, that's the Yoshi's Island one. There's there's some stuff, man. And they're all for like £6.29 over here. So it's a bit pricey in a way, but you're getting some cracking titles out of that. Advance Wars, I would still pay a tenner for. Yeah. I mean, I played the DS one now and then. You know, it's a great game. But um, but yeah, so keep an eye on that. I don't think any of you guys are going to get a Wii U this year, and I'll stand by that as a prediction for 2014. Yeah, you're so, yeah. <laughs> okay. well, let's just face it, it now. Yeah. <laughs> Until comes I this force year. you around to play Mario Kart at the end of May. And then Unless there's a surprise it. announcement and the new game by the guys that made Xenoblade comes out this year, in which case I might well pick one up for that. Because that Project X, the, the new trailer they showed off was looking the smacks, wasn't it? Yeah, that game looks really good. I hope it has really cool jump uh, animations again, like the last one. <laughs> you and that jump animation, man. Oh, sorry. Just let it go. Good game, though. Good game. And a little bit of news from last week. If we'd have done a podcast last week, it might have been relevant. Would be that mm-hmm. Facebook had bought the Oculus VR for two billion dollars. Um, and in my sub comment for that, I wrote this last week. It says, "Does Jesse Eisenberg have a plan to kill Superman involving Oculus VR?" <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's worth though. pointing out. It's worth pointing out that <clears throat> a couple of years ago. There was a Kickstarter for the Oculus Rift where they made, I think, somewhere in the region of a million dollars on Kickstarter to get everything off the ground and going. So in the space of two years, they've gone from raising a million dollars on Kickstarter to being bought for two billion dollars by Facebook. So fucking fair play to those guys, man. Didn't this happen with what the WhatsApp creator as well? Like He went to Facebook and Google and and everyone, and they just... Didn't, weren't interested in that and they bought it for a ridiculous amount of money like yep it, uh, facebook just got all this money that they decided they would piss it all away and because they're bored i don't know <laughs> they probably are bored they got a lot of money so well yeah. they're clever in that they will buy up competition anything that like threatens them they can buy because they're in a position to do that they're one of well, the like biggest Google biggest did. companies on the planet at the moment i would say yeah like in terms of digital companies anyway so but Nintendo still have reserves, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nintendo. Nintendo. I think people are moaning too much, and I, I we used to bitch about this all the time, man, back before the break. And it's just going to be the same thing if we keep talking about it. Never like Nintendo are not in a bad place. They're only in a bad place because of the Wii. Oh, no, of course not. And they're still dominating yeah. the handheld market, so it's okay. That's because the Vita has been a bit. Sucky, but that's another week. <laughs> I don't like talking about the Vita because I just get reminded how much it's slowly dying, and I want it to be amazing. Don't you just yeah. love your Vita, though? Uh, I do. I, I love my Vita. This is why I don't like talking about how badly it's doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like you're disappointing the son. Like you know it. You know he's shit. You, you don't want to talk about it, but deep down you just you want something <laughs> good to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just sake. want to wake up one day and be surprised. Oh, football man! Adventure's coming out next week, so I should kind of be enjoying that. Yeah, awesome. going to get some love. Oh, <laughs> uh, is there Sorry. anything else on this <laughs> day? I was just looking into some information because obviously Nintendo aren't doing so well. Um, I read up that if they lost twenty billion yen, uh, which is like one hundred sixty-three million pounds every year. Um, they could survive until 2052. Bloody yeah. hell. So, yeah, on their reserves. So a, they're fine. They're all right. They're a well-stationed yeah. company, man. A couple of bad years aren't going to kill them. 
Let's just get back up on scratch. Still feel bad for Iwata, though. Um, And that's news that came out this week. His approval rating has dropped from, I believe it was somewhere in the region of 94% in 2011, down to about 74% this year. Which means the board of directors, not the board of directors, but the shareholders and stuff are calling his leadership into check now. Um, He has to commit Harakiri, does he? (laughs) (laughs) This is where Reggie comes in and accidentally commits protection. (laughs) Oh, man. No, he took a 50% pay cut, but he changed their forecast this year from uh, 55 billion no 55 to a smiley billion. face to a sad face <laughs> yeah, pretty much he changed, oh, wait, basically he changed it from a 55 face. from a 55 billion yen profit to a 25 billion yen loss uh, and if that happens oh, they said that a half a 50% pay cut won't be enough so but he has openly stated that he is not planning on leaving and there will be no major restructure at Nintendo anytime soon or in the short That's term I believe his words were so, and I hope I hope they don't, man, because it has been strong for a long time, and just because they're going for a rough patch doesn't mean they need to change their higher ups. It doesn't mean well, that we don't love them. I don't know. It, it might do them some good. You never know these things, but bearing in mind, three out of four of us haven't bought the con- bought the Wii U, so I was waiting for Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true for me as well. You bastards. Mario Kart <laughs> should be the one. Yeah. Mario Kart's got to put We're saying on. that about every Have Mario we? game that comes out there, haven't we? Have we? No. No, no. Mario Kart no. should be one. And Smash Bros. Oh, yeah. Smash, Smash and Smash you're right, Zelda. But I'm still waiting for that proper Mario game. So If yeah. they announce a Retro Studios Metroid game as well, I'll be all over it. What about Goldeneye? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. It'd be cheaper to pull out the N64 and <laughs> play it in its proper glorious it format. Face glass. But that's all of me and all of that. Ben, what's coming up on the channel? That's 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 pretty much it for this podcast then. A- aside from an update on what's new with things with us. Um, Hence we're... the bit where I said, what's coming up on the channel? Yeah, all right. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> no need to pull attention to that I haven't hosted in so long, all right? Um, all right, well, yeah, we're in a position cool. now... We're in a position now where we can do more content than we could before. So uh, expect more frequent uploads. Uh, hopefully hopefully something like an upload every day or at least every other day. There'll be some content coming. Yeah. It'll be quick looks, once a week. Uh, little, little fun Let's Plays. Uh, sometimes maybe bigger series as well, but usually like just, just small fun content really like time wasters that you can see well, yeah i mean we've recorded some trials fusion beta gameplay today haven't we so yeah. that's it's been fun and you know we want to keep it up and that's something that you say it's something we didn't have last time around and now we've got more option to do some let's plays yeah so um, look look yeah. forward to more of those going forward so i mean uh it was only me and jamie playing the trials fusion beta but There'll be there'll be other things going forwards where we're all involved in it and stuff, and it should it should be pretty fun. So look forward to those. And I think that is us done, lads. That is the comeback. Oh, that was lovely. That is that is the comeback episode. It's good yeah. to be back. It is yeah. good to be back. It feels right, man. It feels right. Where we should be. We miss you guys. Awesome. Uh, well, if you want to get in touch with us, see if I can remember all of this. Uh, you can reach us on Facebook at GSE Games. You can reach us on Twitter at GSE Games as well. Uh, you can reach us all individually on our Twitter tags that will be down in the description below. And yeah, you can reach us in the comments section. Give us a fucking comment. We'll talk to you. Yeah. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> that I promise. Begging. I will. I will reply to the first person that comments, even if you call me a bastard. P.S. Don't call and, me a bastard. And if he doesn't he'll have to do a semi-naked dance which will have to be uploaded to our youtube channel there i agree go. cool that's the end it. The end it. That, that's the thing <laughs> that's <a comment>. <laughs> <laughs> cool well thanks for joining us everyone and we will see you next week bye bye, bye. bye.
<laughs> I ended the call instead of recording. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> Did it record okay, though? <laughs> Have you recorded okay? Yeah, I recorded fine. <laughs> so that's about an hour and 15. <laughs> oh, fuck you, fucking idiot. <laughs> 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 Sorry, guys. <laughs>